Hi, it's Daryl again, and I'm going to talk about a road layout that really frustrates me. I'm not just going to say how much it frustrates me, I'm going to also show you how to fix the problem, and that will be later in the video. Um, so anyway, what have we got? We've got Paraparamu. It's, uh, it's in New Zealand, it's near Wellington. It's about 50, 60 kilometers drive from Wellington City, and it's on the major motorway network coming out of Wellington and it's a big suburb it even has its own small airport it's got a big shopping area which is in the middle of this image and it's got a big industrial area in the middle of the image and the motorway goes between those two areas and the road through it is called Capity Road and it always has a traffic jam all the time uh, even when there's no traffic it has a traffic jam because it has too many traffic lights which hold up the traffic and they drive me crazy. So I'm going to give a solution, but first we'll look closer in the problem. And I'm going to skew the map this way here. So Wellington is on the left of the image, and Palmerston North and Levin is on the right of the image. That's where the State Highway, State Highway 1 goes. The shopping center is called Coastlands, down by the railway station at the bottom of the image, and the industrial area is up on the north of the motorway. Um, uh, above the motorway, I'm saying north because it's up, but north is actually in the top right hand corner. Um, you can see there's a little compass rose down the bottom. The red indicator indicates which way is north. Great, I've got that. Next page, click. There we go. So I'm looking at this even closer in again, and in this closer in view, you can see that there is. An interchange here and there's some suburban streets and a giant empty area which hasn't been developed yet it's got a pond in it this weird looking shape uh, um, and by the intersection is a water settlement pond which is where the flood rain water off the highway goes into the pond next page okay so one of the major problems now we're back on this weird diagonal view so this just kind of drives me crazy each one of these orange circles is a set of traffic lights and these traffic lights are very close together at the top of the image the traffic lights are only about five car lengths apart and under the expressway the traffic lights are also only about five car lengths apart these traffic lights are insanely too close together in such a terrible way that it makes no sense then they added additional traffic lights at, uh, this uh, next row down here I forget the name of it for the moment uh, and so what I'm going to do is eliminate those two sets of traffic lights in the middle between the green lines what are the green lines the green lines are the cycle and walking paths so there's a Capity shared pathway which you can take horses and cycles and you can walk on it it's a it's a it's a wide cycle lane it's more than two meters wide it's wide enough to drive a car down it's it's quite large so you can have bikes going in different directions people on bikes can pass pedestrians and and everything it's it's a major part of the um, traffic system for non-powered vehicles and then the other two arrows the green arrows are the predominant flow of the cycle traffic that goes uh, up and down Capity Road. I have a bike and I occasionally ride it up and down this but I don't like riding through here because um, you have to stop too often in a way. Uh, anyway I'm going to give a better solution let's go on the next page next slide. Uh, this is just another view showing I've straightened it up and showed you where those five sets of traffic lights are there's more down off the bottom of the screen there's two or three more sets of lights and they're gonna build another set of lights above the screen so I'm not sure if you if this records my mouse movements um, I don't know if it does so I'm going to talk about it generally as if the mouse isn't pointing at anything to Roto Drive at the top of the image, you can see it's a big industrial area. There's big warehouses. A few people work there. Okay, next page. This is a closer and look at this intersection. It's got three lanes in each direction under the bridge, and one of the lanes, the inside lane, is the turn lane. So if uh, because we drive on the left-hand side in New Zealand. Uh, you can see these cars waiting at the traffic lights 
at the bottom of the image and there's cars waiting at the traffic lights at the top of the image and there's a traffic jam even though there's no traffic on the expressway there's not the what what the traffic lights seem to fail at doing is they hold all the traffic on to Capity uh, Road and don't really allow it to offflow onto the on ramps very easily and that's sort of annoying but we'll get on with this next next slide and so here's the current lane layout where the yellow lines are basically where the bikes go I don't know why I've got a yellow line at the bottom of the image there um, the yellow lines are where the bikes are going and the orange lines are indicating the traffic laning so the the road traffic laning you can see there are a lot of lanes in here okay now answers so what I propose is we get rid of those traffic lights and build kind of effectively a dog bone shaped uh, traffic island and this is just a bit shows you sort of the system you can see to Wellington that way and to Levin up, up the top there and the mint green lines are my new cycleways and footpaths they're going to be combined the combined cycle and footpath so we're not going to have a separate footpath in a separate cycle lane the the um cycle you'd have a painted line that indicates where you want the cyclists and pedestrians to walk but those green minty green lines effectively show you where those cycle lanes are and the orange lines are the new traffic lanes. I've reduced the number of traffic lanes, but the throughput should be faster and you won't actually have to be forced to stop. So you won't have to stop. One of my biggest frustrations is I come back from Wellington late at night. I come in at the top of the image on the, on the top left. I get stopped at a traffic light and then I go under the expressway and I get stopped at another traffic light and then I continue on to the next intersection and get stopped at another traffic light and I see no other cars. I spend two minutes driving through all of this going about 200 metres and I see no other cars and I'm forced to stop at three red traffic lights in a maybe a 300 metre span and I find that really annoying. And then at, at, at peak hour at 5pm in the afternoon all of this intersection seems to block up with cars uh, not being able to get onto the expressway or the motorway and and leave this area okay next page now just look at the top here I'm using the mint green lines are for the cycle cycle paths and pedestrian paths you can see that there are actually green painted um, shared pathways there and I've got purple purple giveaway signs yield signs and I've got orange which are my new lanes so I'm actually reducing the number of lanes but not making everybody stop and the important features here is that the traffic coming off the expressway from Wellington it has a giveaway but it has a very big stop space before the cycle lane so that vehicles vehicles could be coming down that off ramp at 70 or 80 kilometers per hour they're coming off a 100 kilometer per hour motorway and it's sort of a little bit downhill as well and so they have a long slow down lane um, which just stops where the second set of purple give way triangles are it, it stops at a stop sign uh, stop lights there uh, traffic lights um, and so I'm making it so that if you were coming from the bottom of the image going up the mint colored uh, cycle lane you you have a little bit of a, a distortion out of your straight path but you go across the path and the cyclists and pedestrians have the right of way there and the uh, the traffic uh, has to give way or stop and then once they've passed the cycle lane there's two or three car lengths of space where they can queue to go through the intersection where they're giving way just like it's a roundabout you can see that there's sort of that circular part in the middle of the image above the state highway one red shield that circular part is the part that works like a roundabout so it's a roundabout where the these cars that are either going to turn and go um, off the bottom of the image or or turn and go upwards they they have uh, two layers of give way but like if you're driving through here late at night you don't have to stop you just slow down to make sure that there's no cyclists or pedestrians and you continue on and then there's also a give way 
the 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 cycle path crosses further away from the intersection so uh, three car lengths away from the intersection there's a second giveaway where cyclists uh, and pedestrians effectively have the right of way there now you've got to remember that the traffic here that's going up and down Capity Road is already being modulated by the sets of traffic lights on either side so from where this expressway is there's uh, there's a set of traffic lights about 50 meters off the image at the top and another set of traffic lights about 100 meters off the bottom of the image at the bottom and so the traffic is actually already mo modulated and then um, traffic that's coming from Capity Road from the top of this image they they come up to the give way you give way for any cyclists or pedestrians so there's not not that many cyclists or pedestrians it's not a highly pedestrianized zone it's a little bit too far to walk from here to most places so there aren't very many pedestrians but there are quite a few cyclists at certain times of the day so those cyclists actually help modulate the traffic going into the roundabout which means that the roundabout has um, natural breaks caused by the cyclists which means that the the roundabout doesn't get locked with traffic that's sort of just flowing through in one particular way um, you can see that traffic that's coming from the top of the image and going to the right hand side of the image towards Palmerston North and Levin they they give way but then they kind of get a free free turn they don't have to give way for the roundabout they sort of bypass the roundabout and then they get a second give way giving way to uh, traffic uh, the cycles that are crossing over the um, expressway one of the things is because of the directionality of Capity Road mostly the cycles will be going up on the left hand side and going down on the right hand side because the cyclists mostly follow they don't have to but they mostly follow the flow of the traffic because the capity shared pathway that's that goes in both directions but the the cycle lanes that run parallel to capity road the cyclists tend to follow the direction of the um of of the flow of the road traffic for their side of the road they're not they don't compulsorily have to under my new scheme but they they wouldn't they wouldn't generally they wouldn't come from the shared pathway cross over the intersection and then go the wrong way down the side of the road because uh, riding on the side of the road going the wrong way which isn't generally going to happen okay um any other interesting points no i think that gives you an idea of that layout and here's for the uh the bottom half of the expressway got the same thing there's a bit of an interesting thing here there's no shared pathway on the left hand side of the image uh, because there's there's just no there's no pathway there it's only the the motorway on ramp or the expressway on ramp and on the right hand side of the image there's actually a shared pathway which is quite narrow and it goes into a park it cross it, it crosses a park it crosses a park um, that go, just goes into the suburbs there's suburban houses in this corner of the of the image again we have the cycle paths are offset so that when people are go, going on to uh, cross the cycle paths when when motorists are going to cross the cycle pass there's a buffer space before the before the cycle path where they can give way wait for the cyclists move out of the way and then go on but as as um as traffic leaves the new kind of roundabout type of corner so that that the bulb shape in the middle of the image shows that it's sort of shaped like a roundabout but generally traffic won't go round and round this as a as a roundabout in that direction you might come off the off ramp of the expressway and then go under the expressway for example or you come off the expressway and then uh, turn left and then go down Capity Road um, off the bottom of the image there we go I ho hope that makes some sense um, again I've, I've built a new crossing further down and this crossing further down means that pedestrians and cyclists who ended up in the wrong place because they went around the intersection the wrong way they can they can actually cut across at that point but generally that crossing wouldn't be used it wouldn't be used anywhere near as much as the left and right crossings because the left and right crossings are the main flow of the traffic on this road uh, that that are 
the crossing at the the green line crossing at the bottom of the image would be really used. There should be some giveaway. There should be some giveaway signs just there. I left the space for the giveaways, but I didn't draw them in. I just noticed that now. Anyway, uh, that's my idea of how you would make this intersection much better. Uh, the the idea of this is it would allow it would mean that you're not if you're as a motorist you're not forced to stop if there's nothing to stop for which is one of the things that really irks me but the other thing is that um, it would mean that a lot of the traffic that's just uh, taking the on ramps to leave Capity Road they they can leave Capity Road unhindered they're not waiting for traffic lights to change one of the major problems is I'll just I'll just see if I can go back Maybe I'll just go through the stack again. I'll go through the stack again. This one here, um, uh, maybe a closer in view. Yeah, this view here. Um, if if you're here between these two traffic lights, there's only space for about five cars. So each each time some some traffic they come it comes down here. It wants to go on the expressway to go to Wellington. So they're coming from the top of the image, they go through a set of traffic lights, go through a set of traffic lights, go through a set of traffic lights, and then they get to pause under the bridge and wait for that traffic light to turn green before they can take the on-ramp into Wellington. That means that on each change of the traffic lights, only four or five cars, maybe six cars, can can actually get through onto the on-ramp and leave Capity Road. So at, at peak time, especially 5 p.m. in the afternoon, the Capity Road completely saturates with too many cars that are just unable to leave the area and go anywhere. Um, that's just something that I find really annoying uh, in in that situation. I don't know if we can. Don't know if there's anything else that's worthwhile saying for it. No, there. That's a much better view. You can see. You can see more clearly. See, there's a car there, but. You can only fit see one, two, three, four, five cars at the bottom of the edge. You can only fit about six cars, six short cars under there, or or maybe th three or three or four trucks can fit in the space. So this this the gap between these two sets of traffic lights is far too close together for traffic lights to make sense at this type of intersection. Ideally. When they built this, they should have built this. This bridge is two segments long. They should have built the bridge three segments long, and actually, we see how the space was actually reserved. See how that building's built on a diagonal at the top of the image. The space was actually reserved for this to be wider, so that there could be a giant roundabout under the bridge. But they never built it that way. Which is which is a shame because it wouldn't have cost very much more. It would have only cost um, one more set of piles and and a, an, another set of bridge spans. So, you know, it would have only cost a few more million dollars uh, to build, and the flow, the throughput would have been much better. Uh, so that's that's a shame, but it is how it is now. But I think you can retrofit a dog bone shaped. Uh, roundabout in under there. Anyway, that's uh, what does it say? 13 or 18 minutes. I can't quite read that font. Uh, that's enough of the video. Thanks for watching. Take care and have a nice day.